Hello, everybody. Uh, you couldn't see it off air, but we were talking about being confused, and now here we are, equally confused. I'm Evan Abrams. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Motion Design Hotline. I'm Evan Abrams, joined, as always, by Kyle Hamrick. Kyle, how you doing today, man? Uh, spectacular. I just walked back in the door. So, um, <laughs> if you were waiting an extra four minutes for our show to start, that's my fault. Thanks yeah. and sorry. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Our true fans were waiting all of one minute for the show to right, yeah. kick off properly. That's okay. We can be late. This is not this is not an Adobe Live day. This one's just for us, which is when we just are us. going to... It's just us, man. And uh, we're going to eat up some leftovers today. So that's what we're mm. doing on the program. Yum, 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 yum. Uh, before we do that, you know what I should do? I should tweet out the link to our stream. That's probably a good thing to do. Probably. Um, I guess. If that platform is still going to allow us to do things. Wait, uh, uh, what, what do you call them now? X's? In, oh, instead of tweets? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to zeet this out into the world. Um... <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll re-zeet it, I guess. Okay. This, this is riveting entertainment here. Edutainment. Yeah, yeah, two two people tweet about the show that's supposed to be happening right now. <laughs> it's very meta, but yeah. not because that's a different company. <laughs> oh, a rival company. Uh... All right, so and yeah, uh, here. Well, I'll take advantage of this this time to yeah. uh, uh, talk about what we're doing today. So we had some leftover um, responsive grid projects, and I can call it a grid now because it's not our tiles show, and I'm not um, trying to shoehorn it in there. Um, so <laughs> I have a, uh, a little responsive grid set up that I had built for the last episode. Uh, we just didn't really have time to talk about it, which is great because now we can kind of focus on that, which is you know kind of its own thing. Um, and I have a couple examples that I built here, and I know Evan has some um, that take advantage of a third-party tool that can help make a lot of this easier. Um, yeah. But I'm going to be building some of this manually, so um, I think that'll be uh, fun and nerdy and useful, and uh, that that will be our day. Kyle, I uh, looked back at the screen and saw what my face... Thanks to the way delays work on this program, I was able to see mm -hmm. what my face looks like when I'm typing a tweet. That is not a happy-looking man. Um, <laughs> let's have a look at your screen so my face gets smaller. Uh, <laughs> we could talk about what what you've got going on. So last time, yeah. right, like at the end of our show last week, we didn't quite get to this, this resizing grid of Evan uh -huh. faces. Yep. So, yeah, so, so squish and squash those, those buddies around. Yeah, so we're going to do that. And then um, I also have this other example of these waffles um, that if you follow me on Instagram, uh, Kylosaurus Rex, you might have seen this a couple weeks ago when we did our first tile episode, but we didn't dive into this one either um, because uh, we just had better examples um, that were kind of, you know, more in line with what we were teaching. But yeah. um, the concept that I used here is a great introduction to how to build the grid of Evans. And those are both great lead-ins for what you're going to show us, which is kind of um, taking this further. Uh, you know, building something like this Evan grid uh, with only four, you know, it's not too bad. There are some expressions going on. There's a little bit of math. It's more like uh, the logic of thinking through it than, yeah. than you know, super tough math. Uh, but once you get more than, you know, a couple tiles going on, it gets dense pretty fast. So... <laughs> Um, that's a great place to lean on some third-party tools. Hmm. I think that's also really important what you said about the math isn't hard, but it's it's the conceptual math that yeah. we're doing that is hard. Like the computer is doing all the calculations. Right. We we just need to be able to tell it what to do. Like that's that's the programmatic thinking is okay. What are the inputs I'm dealing with? How do I want to convert them into what kind of outputs do I want? Anywhere. It's, I think a lot of people have bad experiences with math and they don't want to do like programmy stuff. <laughs> yeah. If that makes but sense. A lot of it, the actual math that you're doing, it's often like elementary school level stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the thinking through the steps of how you might get there can be more complex, but I mean, you're usually just doing like basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, stuff like that. Um, it's often not, you know, that complex on a structural level. 
Yeah. But knowing what After Effects is capable of and thinking like, okay, these are the pieces that I have. How can I put these together to get the output that I need? Um, that's that's the part that, you know, maybe isn't for everyone. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we can get you closer to it today. I had a, I had a math uh, teacher in high school who described math as the fundamental language of the universe. And uh, that really uh, opened up some stuff for me. <laughs> that was... There was something very useful about about just you know saying that math is just a way of describing the world in specific ways. Um, anyway, let's describe some other stuff. In specific yeah, ways. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, interesting. We could riff on this for for probably an hour if we wanted to. I don't know. I mean, math, music is math. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of what we do is math and video editing and all that kind of stuff. Like rigid structures that you then uh, break in artful ways um, so that they feel good. Yeah, like oh. that genius Mozart, not that absolute hack Salieri. Uh, let's <laughs> continue. Yeah, so talk to me about, okay, so we got four four grids. We, we got these four yeah, grids. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well, I'm going to start with the waffles here. Um, okay, waffles first. Yeah, waffles first, because waffles is the simplified version of this uh, because... Um, spoiler alert, there's actually only two waffles here. <laughs> Did I the just devil you say? <laughs> bake your noodle there? All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So here is that setup. Um, and uh, then because this was originally for the tile episode, I was using Repitile to just make more waffles. Oh. So it's just a quick little cheat there. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So the whole... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, so this this comp here is just um, I'm not going to worry about the rotation. That's that's actually happening inside of a pre comp. So um, it's just there to make things look more interesting. Okay. okay. Um, but all this is is uh, you're currently looking at all the keyframes that are in this composition. Hmm. This one uh, kind of the tan natural colored waffle here is just scaling up and then scaling back down. Okay, that's all that's going on. So if we want the other, the pink waffle to be responsive to that and kind of share the space evenly, um, you know, we just need to think through how to do that. So I'll start by saying that with scale, when you're creating expressions, which is what we're going to do to accomplish this, you, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, you do need to, need to be mindful that you need to put your stuff into what's called an array uh, because you have the X value and the Y value. And a lot of times with scale, you are wanting things to stay proportional. So, you know, if this goes from 100, 100 to 20, 20, right? You don't want it to like squish in, in strange ways, at least in this example. Um, so the easy way to do that is basically just to establish one of those numbers and then you plug it into both of them at the end, okay? It doesn't matter, um, you know, you can take say the X or the Y here and do something with it and then plug that same one into both the X and the Y of the output that is what the layer actually becomes. Mm -hmm. um, so just to kind of, uh, I don't know, quickly do that manually here. I'll alt click on the stopwatch, so I'm creating an expression. And then if I type 100 comma 100 in brackets right now, I've just made a, I've essentially locked this scale right here. Um, I didn't change anything, but I could type this as you know 50 comma 50. And now that layer scale is is locked there. The first one being the X, second one being the Y. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just wanted to lay a little groundwork in case any of the the folks watching were um, you know brand new to this this concept of arrays. They can be just a little wonky. So I'm going to create an expression, and I'm going to start by creating a variable that is the scale of that yellow waffle layer. Okay. So I'm going to write var. This is optional, and there's other, if you're a coding nerd, you might argue with me that const or let is more appropriate here. I like var because we're establishing a variable. That's like a good linguistic thing to establish here. Right. Um, and so that that looks that looks better to my eyes than const um, in here. Anyway, uh, so we're establishing a variable called uh, other... Waffle scale. Okay. Right. And I would even say that, like, 
I don't know. If we want to get pedantic, constant is for constants. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> right. Th this is a whole thing, a rabbit hole that we do not need to go into. That's today. true. Yeah, yeah. We look. We don't need to get too pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> pedantic Hamrick in the house. Um, okay, so I've established a variable called other waffle scale, and I'm just going to pick whip that to. I'll choose the x value of this. And so that's going to say, in this composition, look at the layer called waffle one, and then look at the property, the transform property, scale. And in this case, it says scale zero. That means the x value of this. If you wanted the y value, you choose one. In this case, they're the same, so just pick one. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Semicolon to end that line. And then we're going to do something with this, OK? So let's say we're going to create another variable called s. And this is what we're actually going to feed into this layer. So, Evan, if I want whatever's left here, right, um, okay. these these layers are both the same size to start. And so if I want kind of whatever's left over from this, uh, from this other layer taking up the space, mm -hmm. all I have to do, right, uh, we're using a property that goes from 0 to 100, so this is pretty easy. I'll just say 100 minus other waffle scale. And now that's going to be whatever's left over from the amount of space that one takes up, right? I'm glad that there's so much talk of leftovers on this. Uh, yeah, yeah. On this one. Man, we're you know, really leftover today. waffles can be all right if you like toast them up properly, <laughs> right? You can get, it's not as good as fresh, but um, okay. Oh, yeah, so yeah. this is positing a world in which you're not just eating frozen waffles. <laughs> well, you know, those have their place too. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we've now established this variable of s that is whatever's left between you know zero and 100. That first one is taking up some amount of space, and we're going to take whatever's left there. Okay, and so I just need to plug that back in, like I did before. I'm going to make some brackets and then just say s comma s, and so it's going to plug that value that I created into both the x and y of this layer. And so now you'll see there's a lot of space because these are actually big square compositions here. Mm. Um, so imagine that the squares come out from the circles here. Um, there you go. It's so when this, when the yellow one is 80, this one's 20, right? When the yellow one's 20, this one's 80 anywhere in between. It's always going to be a hundred minus whatever that number is. Mm. And so this is kind of the basis of a lot of what I'm doing in that more complex composition. Um, and if you want to, uh, in this case, like you might visually want to tweak this a little bit and kind of give yourself um, some some spill or some gutters or whatever you might want to call it, right? You could maybe multiply this first value by 0.8 or something like that. So you're looking at, you know, most of it, but you'll see we kind of get some overlaps here. And if I click on the layers, you'll see where those layer boundaries actually are. And now they're overlapping quite a bit. So if these were squares, they'd be they'd be touching. But since they're circles, you know, they're not. Um, so you could futz with this until it's uh, visually pleasing to you, whatever the case may be. Looks like that was a little too much. So 0.8, probably good enough here. And then we could be happy with our proportional waffles and do whatever else we want. Um, in this case, you could turn that repetile back on. And, you know, then it looks like you've got a, ah, we'll see, it doesn't work. Uh, that little offset doesn't work when you've got all the waffles in place. There you go. So that's that's the basic concept here. Man. Well, it's a good thing you went with purple instead of blue waffles, for those who are aware of early internet. Um, <laughs> I don't catch that reference, but maybe I shouldn't. You should not. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, so this is good. Um, so basic math. What's left over after a hundred? We got we have two things reacting to each other. I think I think that's good. We got so I guess the next level of difficulty. What if four things interact with each other? Right? Let's get what let's, if? Yeah. Let's crank it up. Uh, one. Uh, what am I thinking of? One exponent? No. One. One. One order of magnitude <laughs> larger. Yeah. I I, yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah. We're going from two things to four, and then um, so we'll we'll be getting significantly more complicated and you'll see there are more expressions going on in this finished version of the of the comp here but um hopefully this will all make sense hmm. so um in this case i am building this in in a, a fixed size composition but 
Um, I am going to mostly do this. Uh, I, oh, don't quote me on this, but mostly do this in a way where it should work if you were to paste these layers into something of a different size. Right. Um, we'll see if that's true all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to find out, download the project files. And, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> MotionDesignHotline.com, a website full of files. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, in this composition, um, I have some square shape layers that uh, are just colors that we'll, um, we'll be filling up in a minute here. We're just going to start with our lines, okay? And um, this edge stroke is just here for visibility. So these two are actually all that we're doing. Um, we're going to use these for kind of a lot of the, the basics of the setup here, okay? Mm -hmm. So I have created two slider controls that go on this controls layer. And you can just do those from effect, expression controls, slider control. That's all it is. It's just one number. Um, and so I have this set where they're both on 50 right now, but uh, that's just kind of arbitrary. And then I have both of these um, things set in the middle. Um, I will even change the color of this one just so that we can tell what we're talking about. So. I was a little torn on the vocab here because the vertical split is a horizontal line that splits it into two rows, right? Okay. Yeah, I could have gone either way there, but <laughs> um, so that, here I'll, I'll make this layer yellow too. Now, now you know we know what we're talking about. Okay, let's just so call this one of just... them Randy, and we'll call the other one Jerry. <laughs> That'll be <laughs> super is that helpful. helpful. Yeah, I yeah. Don't this, know. this is helping everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I'm actually going to push both of these not to the middle so that once we get it correct, we'll be able to see because mm -hmm. our sliders are set at 50. I'm going to use these as percentages again, kind of like what we just did with scale, okay? So for this, uh, this one that splits it into two horizontal segments, okay, let's do that one first. So uh, we'll create an expression and then we'll think about um, what we want to do here. So we know that we're going to need this slider. So we'll go ahead and just grab that. What should we call that? We'll, well that's just call Randy. that slider. <laughs> yeah, uh, Randy. OK, that's Randy. <laughs> so establishing a variable of Randy. And I'm calling this a percentage, right? And so what's the easiest way to get that? Divide something by 100. And so that way you're not going from zero to one from the values you get from that slider. You're going from zero to a hundred. Okay. And so uh, <laughs> we'll work with Randy here. Um, in this case, we want to look at the width of this composition. Okay. So I'm going to look at this comp dot width. And then we're going to multiply that times Randy. And remember Randy is a zero to 100 slider. So it's the percentage of this comp's width. Right. And so now that Randy is set to 50, it puts us exactly in the middle. As I scrub this around, you'll see. So 2% uh, puts Randy right there. 20% puts Randy there. 80% puts Randy there. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing for the vertical one. Uh, what, what name did we put on that one? Well, I was saying Jerry, but you know, Jerry, Jerry with an I. Um, and I guess it's I guess it's important to understand. G E R I, like, perfect. Yeah, Geary. So the when we're looking at things like this comp dot width, this comp dot height, right? These are like we call them objects, and there's, there's a yes. lot of objects that we can point to. So you could look at the frame duration. You could look at the names of things. You could look at um, pretty much anything that is that is sort of true about about a composition or about mm -hmm. a layer or that is true about all these different pieces of data that exist for us to kind of hook into anything that's a property, right? We can grab yeah. a hold of one of those. So we're familiar. I think we're most familiar with kind of the properties that we interact with. There's a whole bunch of properties we don't interact with yeah. that, that exist. Um, and if anyone's interested, sometimes you'll, you'll see, People getting excited about scripting hooks, like new new scripting hooks just dropped. Why is everyone so jized about scripting hooks? Well, it's because we just got access to a new thing. Yeah, it's it's new things that we can point to or draw from, or you know, it's it's just it's adding more tools, and they're tools that we yeah. probably don't see, but you will see them because they get deployed as 
scripts and people start to to point to them. Someone had a really interesting one uh, on Twitter today that, um, for example, there is like um, there's a function where you can you can select a keyframe and and then move the current time indicator to that that keyframe which is not available as a menu command, but you can, if you, if you find the hook, you can key bind that if you custom your custom key bind it for yourself. Um, you just need to find out what the function is. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Kyle, you were, you were coding <laughs> in Jerry here. Well, uh, that, I mean, I'm glad that you kind of went over that. So I'll bring up my composition settings for a second to point out that this composition, it's a 1080 by 1080 square. Hmm. So in this particular case, if I didn't want this to be as responsive, I could have, instead of this comp width, I could just say 1080 right there, and I would have the exact same functionality. Yeah. But um, I like to make things uh, non-destructive or flexible, however you like to talk about it. Um, and so because it's set up this way, I could actually change this comp width to, say, 200 now. And Randy is still going to respect that, right? Um because Randy is relative to the size of this composition. Yeah, and like, I don't know. I, I think that, because if we just typed in 1080, that's not really what we're doing, right? What we're, right. Do, it, we're doing is percentage of comp width. So exactly. just be, being aware, like, we don't even have to know the numbers, right? Yeah, so, it, so, it could be any number. You don't have to know it. That This keeps you from having to remember how big your composition is. <laughs> we're here to stop you from holding numbers in your mind. We want to prevent <laughs> that. Okay, so let's finish up with Jerry here. Okay. So... Uh, in this case, I just need to, again, drag right here. And then I will, again, divide by 100, make a semicolon. And so then, in this case, I just need this comp dot height because that's what we're measuring now, times Jerry. <laughs> and so, oops, uh, something happened. Oh, I missed this comp. There we go. So now that is good to go right here. And so now we have the basis of uh, what we're going to do. And in this case, that I felt like um, having these as percentages is what would make the most sense for what I was building. Mm -hmm. If if you um, that's a big thing to kind of think about. If you're building a setup like this, you want to think, what do I want to touch? What do I want to control? Um, and as we're going to see with the uh, flex, the tool that you're going to show us, that's yeah. more about creating lines. Um, on the screen that work the same way, but that's what you touch. Um, <laughs> and you don't worry about the numbers so much as like, ah, I, wa I want this thing to be able to move over here and things to respond to it. Um, in this case, I thought just having these two sliders was going to make sense for me. So that's what I'm building from. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and set these back to 50-50 just to kind of uh, make our life a little bit easier here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set this back to white now that we've kind of um, gotten those lined up. All right. So now that we have those two in place, um, actually, let's let's keep those open because we're going to use these values. So let's think about um, filling these up. OK, so this pink square, um, you'll see it's the size of the composition. OK, I don't really need to think too much about it right now. If I want it to stretch with these, um, I totally can, or I could just build this in a way where this gets covered up by, you know, um, squares two, three, and four, and I don't even need to worry about making mm. this stretch. So instead, let's think about this blue one that goes down here. Okay, so how are we going to get this position and make it, um, let's, uh, yeah, let's change this number a little bit. How are we going to position this so that it lives in the right spot? Mm. Well, if we make this easy on ourselves, because we already have what would be its top left, we can put the anchor point of this layer at the top left, and then we just need to connect that, right? But again, we kind of need to use a little bit of math here. But we already have our X and Y values sitting right ahead of us. Oh, yeah. Right, right above us, yeah. So the X value of this layer, since the anchor point is at the top left, the X value of that layer should be that line. And the Y value of that layer should be that line. <laughs> there you go. And so now, whatever these are set to is where it moves. I'm not mm. scaling it. I'm just moving it, OK? So we can worry about moving it in a minute. Um, and in fact, uh, let's. 
let's let's think about scaling this thing so that it actually ends up at the edges of the composition. Um, let's actually do that with the pink layer here. All right, so this might be a little more complex, but not too much because again, we have these numbers, right? right? If for these sliders, if something is at 0%, that means it's either at the left side or the top. And so for this pink layer, which is based in that corner, well, that's pretty easy to do, right? <laughs> um, so uh, this is our X value and this is our Y value. Okay, so let's say variable X and a variable Y. Okay, so we'll just connect this one up here, semicolon, connect this one up here, semicolon, and then let's bracket X comma Y and plug that in. Okay, well, easy peasy, right? Kyle, there's a kind of ASMR quality to... <laughs> to hearing you describe code, I got I gotta say, what if we pivoted our show to be that? Well, maybe we could. Yeah, maybe we could, Evan. I mean, I assume that we'd need to do it more like this and have kind of NPR voice going on. Well, I think we'd also have to rely less on Zoom as our go-between because it probably it, it does a very bad job of of preserving the vocal range that we're interested <laughs> in. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. This kind of like procedural stuff is like, man, this is this is actually just very relaxing to hear. Oh, good. Uh, a lot of people find code scary, so uh, it's nice when it's uh, not. Yeah, it's um, scary because it lulls you into a sense of security and then pounces. Um, so, I mean, in this case, uh, it's so uh, you know it's scaling exactly as it needs to. But one thing I want to point out: it doesn't matter now that we have just a solid shape. But I want to point out: this is scaling. Uh, non-proportionally, hmm. okay, which I don't particularly want. These are squares, and I'd like them to stay squares because, as you may recall, we have a photo here, and if we're scaling non-proportionally, we're going to get squishy Evans, and we don't want that. No. All right. <laughs> Evans squishy enough already. <laughs> okay. So instead of <laughs> instead of plugging these values directly in, let's instead let the computer do a little bit of math here. All right. Hmm. Let's. Um, there are some math functions, and uh, so I'm going to uh, create another variable here. Let's say variable s is math dot max of x or y. Look at the one that's biggest, and choose that. Hmm. And then we'll plug s comma s into this value. So right now. Uh, you know, our X value is scaled way, way up and our Y value is scaled way, way up or way, way down. But it's using the larger of those two. OK. Mm. And, and that way we'll always keep a square in whichever dimension is bigger. And then um, let's go ahead. Uh, hopefully the, the concept is is pretty solid here. This um, the rest of this mostly becomes like. Think, um, just like I did with the waffles, you know, getting this little blue sliver over here is just that value, 100 minus that value, okay? Mm -hmm. Or comp width minus that value. However you want to think about getting that number, that's all it is. Hmm. Um, but what we want to do is think about how we would keep a photo of you in this space. Right. And I think just before we move on, uh -huh. you, did, you did the max one. Maybe just show what uh, what min would look like, right? So yes, that folks can exactly. enjoy enjoy those things. Great. Hey, so what's going on that, in the corner? That code just, this code <laughs> uh, changes to uh, math.min, and then it's got um, you know what you're feeding it in the parentheses there. And so if I click out of that, it's going to take whichever of those values is smaller and feed that. And so in this case, you'll see that's not what we want because it leaves a gap, right? But if I if I kind of come in here and squish that smaller, um, but these are very useful to know anytime that you need to kind of compare two values like that. Yeah, don't don't waste your time doing a, a you know if this is bigger than that, we can literally uh -huh. just take the bigger value, and that array like it doesn't have to be a two part array. It could be the whichever is the largest of like seven things or whatever, yep. right? It's however many exactly. go in there. Um, very useful. Like of all. 
of all the various maths that you can do, right? You can even do like averages. You can Some do... of them are quite scary. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. But you can do like means, medians, like any kind mm -hmm. of... Any kind of thing that you would you would have to do in math, you can pretty much math dot whatever that thing is and make the yeah. computer do it. The computer loves to do this yeah. stuff. You want to figure out square roots? No, me neither. I'll let After Effects do that if that's the thing I need to find. <laughs> yeah, you you could enjoy the modulo uh, uh, operator. Yeah. All these fun things that you could be making the, the computer finally do the math for you. It's uh, <laughs> an age of technology. Uh, okay, so I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to bring this photo uh, over from this one. I'll destroy the expressions here. And, um, what was that slider? Oh, so that's one of my own little uh, things that I did for the ease here. Um, okay, let's, oh, hang on. Let me make sure. Okay, I'm going to hang on to that scale. Okay. Because I'm doing the same trick here. Uh, this is just a little uh, trick that I do with um, on a layer to have its own scale adjustment um, so that it can be sort of an odd value, but you can still think of it in zero to 100 terms. Um, and I can explain that if we want, but it's not super relevant here. It's just to kind of make it easier so you don't have to think like, well, I actually have this photo scaled to 41.3% to like fit in the box. Mm -hmm. And so then I would have to like transpose the math. Um, but, uh, yeah, we don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, so if you look at the, uh, the scale math that, um, this is from the completed version. So you'll see it's the same. Um, let's bring this down to where it actually lives on the pink layer. Here we go. Um, you'll see that the expression is basically the same. It's looking at the, uh, horizontal and the vertical, and then taking whichever of those is bigger. And so it's, uh, again, going to be scaling exactly the way that layer is. But you'll see it's not positioned correctly right now, okay? Mm. Mm. Um, so I want this photo to scale along with the amount, you know, how big this square is, which means scaling it from the left corner is probably not going to really work. We want it centered. So how would we get that? Well, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm posing hypothetical questions to <laughs> no one. Um, well, I'm here, forcing but... you to answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So here's our our photo of Evan, and that's where I would like the anchor point to be. I kind of decided that's um, you know we could actually move this wherever. We could have it be the bridge of his nose here, if that makes more sense. Um, so we have one position value. Right, and then we have one position value down here, but we actually have the other one as well. And so we just want the center point of whatever this edge is and whatever this edge is. Well, hmm. we know this edge, right? It's uh, uh, right here. This That is our X value. And then our left edge is zero, of course. <laughs> so if we want to kind of think about it in those terms, yeah, um, we could say, left we could create a variable for left and a variable for right okay so left is the edge of the comp which is just zero and right is that value of our our line okay and then we could um average those using max things but you could also just do it um <laughs> you know you can do it old school if you like here so let's say left long plus right <laughs> yeah left plus right divided by two add things together and then uh, divide them by however many there are. And that'll give you the average of that. So it's always going to put this directly in the middle of that line and the edge of the composition, right? And you'll see that it's also scaling so that once it, you know, gets too small in one direction, it kind of stops scaling that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's just do the same thing for the other one. And then I'd say we can kind of cap this here because that's basically um, yeah. and then all repeat of it. it four times. <laughs> right, it, exactly. Um, all right, so our top is again zero, and then the bottom here is wherever that uh, here we go that y position, and then so we'll say top plus bottom divided by two, and now that's always going to be vertically centered in that square. 
no matter what size this is. And you'll see it's kind of respecting that. So the rest of this is just a little bit of kind of matting setups mm. um, and thinking about layering so that things kind of all sit the way that they uh, need to, to cover each other up properly or be matted by the proper layers, um, so on and so forth. When you do these yellow ones, you're doing the exact same thing, but instead of zero as your left edge, you're thinking about whatever that line is, and then your right side is 1080 or this comp dot width. Okay, so it's exactly the same. You're just kind of taking the other piece of it there. Um, so I don't know. Do you feel like there's anything else I should dig into here? I feel like you're kind of just extending that concept yeah. um, to all the other ones. But you can see, um, you know, if this had four squares across, you already have to start thinking, okay, well, I've got from here to here is the first one, and then from here to here is the second one. So it's a lot more keeping track of stuff and being very careful with your naming. So, uh, you know, Randy and Jerry may not get you very far then. Um, you need to be very precise about your names so that you are sort of pointing everything to the right place. But yeah, in terms of setup, it's not really any more difficult. It's just more of it. Yeah, and so we are up to, what do we got? We've got, I'm trying to think of how many lines of code we've ended up with here. Because um, it's worth, it's always worth kind of remembering, like you're creating these systems. The systems are meant to allow us to do some things faster. Mm -hmm. um, and then at a certain point, you're spending more time building the right. tool than you are actually doing the thing. Like, this is a great template if you're going to sort of reuse it a bunch of times for a mm -hmm. bunch of stuff, right? If this is the kind of branded object. And actually, if you wouldn't mind while we're here, yeah, showing how to turn this into an essential graphics thing, right? Like if yeah. we wanted to change the colors and swap out the images and then just push this over to like Premiere and say, you know what, this, Absolutely. Is, a, this is an editor problem now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so in this case, in this particular build, um, I would open up Essential Graphics and I would just feed the horizontal and vertical. Yes, I know it's keyframed. In this case, we wouldn't want it keyframed if it were becoming, say, a Mogurt for Premiere. Um, but we just give those slider values and make sure that we cap off the range at 100. You can edit that when you add these sliders in uh, just by clicking Edit Range. And that way it can't go above 100 because we're using these as percentages, right? Um, and then uh, in this case, since they're all the same, um, if they were going to be all the same, I would probably pre-compose this and feed that back to all these. But let's say that each of these was going to be a different um, image. Well, you can actually just drag images directly up into the panel. And uh, you know, maybe here, I would drag all four of these and then they could be different things. I would just uh, want to um, name them very carefully. Um, if these colors are fixed, then you know the colors are fine. If the colors aren't fixed, then I would probably want to drag colors too. And then I might want to start like formatting with a group and instead call this say lower right. And then you'd have like the image and the fill color that live in the lower right group. Um, and this is kind of as segmented and partitioned as as is uh, you know logical for whatever your setup is. Right. And I don't think. Uh, if we do send it over to Premiere, I don't think you can keyframe the sliders, unfortunately. No. But, you know, you still have fun you with can't. that. But You'd be able to adjust them, but not keyframe them, unfortunately. Yeah. However, now now that everything's pushed into an essential graphics thing, you could just be inside of After Effects, you can be pushing those uh -huh. things sure around could. as much as you want, right? So if you're making kind of social media templates and stuff like that, this is a great way to construct one of those to be really hands-off. Um, ooh, and what is this? Uh, you <laughs> you can drag images into the central graphics panel. That's right. It's uh, uh -huh. it's big time stuff. Mind equals blood, yeah, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, uh, wait for this. Okay, so um, you could use an image or a video and drag it up into that panel. And now that that um, exists, so I can open this here in my timeline, and you'll see here in essential properties, I've got those two sliders, and then each of those. Uh, little, uh, including the little group that I made, right? Mm -hmm. You'll see there's a little thumbnail down there. I could drag some other image into that, or these are also available in the properties panel, which is probably an easier place to deal with them. Mm. Um, so I could drag another image onto any of those, or I could drag a video onto any of those, or I could drag a composition onto any of those. So uh, just to get real wacky here, let's take my waffle spin 
and drag that <laughs> into that lower left corner. So I've got my animated waffle spin composition. Uh, and obviously this is creating some, some heft uh, for rendering here. But um, it's just living in there like it were any other asset. And, you know, all of the expressions and all the setup, um, it's the same because it's just applying it to, it's sort of a container at this point. So it applies it to whatever you put into that container. <laughs> Well, this is good. It sounds like we're blowing some minds today. This is fantastic. Good. This is what we want. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's great because, you know, you do all this hard work to make a very, I don't know, can seem like a very complicated thing, right? And oh, I want to change it out for stuff. Well, there you go. Now you don't have to, you don't have to open the hood if you want to change the various components <laughs> around, right? That's, uh, that's the joy of the joy of making the stuff. Um, okay. And so, of course, as we said earlier, uh, if, if some of the code went over your head, um, you know, shortly after the episode is done, you'll be able to download this project file from motiondesignhotline.com, a real website for real people. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, I'll, just... I'll be able to say that with a straight face one of these days, if we decide that's the tagline, but to segue to Evan, he's going to show you a really handy tool by a very smart friend of ours that can make some of this easier as well. That's true. I mean, you, you saw all the hard work that went into making that. Well, here here's something that will hopefully take less uh, hard work to do. <laughs> so here is a grid of 12 things. So one, two, three by one, two, three, four. And all of this is being controlled by, we're controlling it all by just changing the where the grid lines are. So where are the grid lines? And how should the things inside those grid lines behave and respond, right? That's the, that's the big thing. It's very similar to what, what, Kyle, you just did manually, right? What you just slaved over a hot keyboard with your bare hands uh -huh. to, uh, to produce. Yeah, but a four by three would be um, quite a bit more work than mine. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like everything within has to be relative to the other things. One of the one of the parts that always gets me is like what needs to reference what going back and back and back so yeah. that everything doesn't cause conflict. But in this example, we are using, we go up to window. This is called flex. I've got it open somewhere. I have no idea where, where have I put, where have I put <laughs> that? Uh, all these different screens, Kyle. Um, but do, 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 Oh no, that's the timeline called flex. You know, it's a bad idea to name, <laughs> don't name the things. <laughs> the same as the things you're trying to open. Mm. Down to the bottom. Flex. Just has been. Um, sounds like a wizard spell. And it kind of is. So. <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> kind uh, of Zach Lovett is kind of a wizard. So that uh, makes sense. He's a kind of powerful wizard, isn't he? Um, <laughs> you are a wizard, Harry. So here we've got a composition. I've got some spheres. Some some things that are, you know. i got like a beach ball looking thing. And I'm going to go on here. We're going to go layer, time, enable time remapping. I was going to say chime remapping. I don't know. I don't know what regional accent that is. Um, but uh, it's one of them. Ebenese. Yeah, that's right. That's what, I, don't, I don't even know what I'm commenting on. Um, so I'm going to use a, a loop out uh, expression. So we have constant beach ball, which is great. Uh, I'm going to bring out a triangle. And I believe that this is doing a similar type of thing. So we'll layer time, enable the old timer map on this. Um, and this one's going to go from zero, I think, to like two seconds. That's its whole, that's its whole deal. Um, remove the last time thing, and then we'll loop that out as well. So, okay, we're all, we're all nice and set up to, to make this stuff kind of work. So we got these two repeating graphics around right and let's say that i wanted just a big old line of those i don't know however many let's say like five of them i though. demand this yeah, yeah. <laughs> i demand five <laughs> this is what people want the people want five of them so we've got flex open we are in line mode this is the simpler form of it and we have to say do you want a row or a column we've, we've already got them kind of column ish so we might as well say this oh and we need to give them unique names so that's an important one if you know someone's true name, you can gain power over them. Uh, and that is true of layers. So we have to... If you know if you know a layer is true name, you can reference it in expressions and not confuse After Effects. That's right. You gain, you gain power over it by naming it. This is 
very critical. This is good for spells, hexes, whatever whatever you're doing. So um, we've got these things. <laughs> Evan and Kyle got canceled for advising people to put hexes on each other. <laughs> so I'm going to just hit rig column with these. Now it's calculating, 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 doing a bunch of stuff. And what we end up with is a a controller, and this controller is making some global choices, but if you have a look at the layers, it's arranged them all to stack on top of each other, one on top of the next, on top of the next. If we come into here and we add a little bit of a gutter to them, you can see that it's shrinking all of them to have a little bit of space in between, which, you know, maybe we want, maybe we don't. You can also use this to create mats so that these objects will only be seen uh, within these areas, but I thought for now, just kind of show how some of this works and it all comes down to this thing that's called layer weight so what is the weight of this within the grouping what is the weight of this one within the grouping right and you can see that they're all responding to each other based on the weightiness or the percentage of the total thing that each one wants to take up and you can see that the others are responding. So it's almost like if we added up all of the weights of all of these and then averaged them back down, that's what we're going to end up with. So yeah. it's a really, I'm going to say, kind of heady thing to try to get around. <laughs> that, yeah, that it, I mean, think about what, what you saw with mine, where you're just having two objects share the space. Yeah. And like when you're when you're scaling up, um, you know, say the bottom one, for example, is is visually uh, makes a lot of sense here. When you scale up the bottom one, it's working exactly the same, except uh, as my example, except now you have four other layers sharing whatever that amount is left. And then <laughs> obviously every one of those layers has to calculate all the other layers in the row. So significantly more complicated math, but hopefully the idea is still clear. Yeah. And it, it's again, right. We're doing, it's the same thing, but just more of it. And if we had to write though that these lines of code, if we just uh, snap that open for ourselves, <laughs> so there's a lot of it. And even within those, I'm not, we're not going to go in there because a lot of stuff. Um, but this is where constants are important, right? Because there are, these are things that are external ref things that need to be referenced and they are constants. So, Anyway, we've got these objects, they're on top of each other, um, and they all have a method to them. So right now they're all at fit best, but we could try to make them stretch. So right now they are they are stretching to fill the space, so we could do yeah, that. I don't like that. <laughs> it's Be bad. Tough. Yeah. <laughs> undo, undo, undo. But there are, there are all these wonderful ways. You could just say none, and they'll just change their their position within here so they're they're just trying to to find their space it's i i tend to use something like fit best which is again we talked about we can conform to the width or the height which as you saw kyle do the min or the max of whatever those things are similar idea here and fit best is toggling between which one is appropriate and we're going to see more about that when we when we push it into the grid mode gr when we griddleize it when we put them on a griddle um so <laughs> let's go ahead and griddle that um so let's griddle um kyle what is a griddle <laughs> it feels it's, like... it's a flat cooking surface uh, okay all right which yeah it doesn't really have a grid component to it it's just a big rectangle yeah so it's confusing for all parties involved. Um, let's see, what do I need here? Let's just, yeah, I think I wanted to plop down, plop down a triangle. We're gonna, let's not call it that. Let's give it like a number. Let's call it zero one. And let's say we wanted a grid. Well, all right, I'm just gonna roughly arrange these into a grid-like object like this. And for our own naming convention, it would be helpful if we did a better job, but that's fine. We don't have to. Um, yep. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select them and make some columns. So rig up a column. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, wait. Sorry. We need to go into grid mode. Make sure you're in grid you mode. Yep. We're going to rig up a column. Bloop, 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 bloop. And then we get this, this sick control over here that I can now change the width of the yeah. column as I would like. And within... 
right? We can we can make some changes about the the objects inside, but you're probably wondering like we've got the grid boundaries. It doesn't we don't have a top or bottom to it, and this doesn't have a weight yet because we still need to define we need to define more of the grid. Basically, it's not we've done yeah, it. You don't really have a grid yet. No. So I'm going to grab these. You're all a column. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And it didn't make two. It just made an extra one off to the side here so that we can we can now... Okay, these are responding. That's that's looking good and feeling good. Yeah, Great. one cool thing about Flex is that it it looks for controls that already exist and uh, uses them. Yeah. So it doesn't and have it, to create an extra. It's work. It's doing the work. So there we go. We've got... We've got these things, these are responding. So now we need some rows. So I'm just gonna rig up a row, grabbing these, rig up a row, grabbing those, rig up a row. How about y'all? Y'all wanna be a row? You're a row now. So now these objects are interfacing with each other, you know, using this. If we grab one of those, you can see into its grid boundaries what it's respecting for top, bottom, left, right. We've done a perfectly a perfectly beautiful grid like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be this way. So let's just go back, 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 back. So let's say we're gonna do a grid that's a little bit more advanced, right? That we're gonna have some elements kind of like this, right? This is where things are gonna get a little bit funny. So basically we're gonna be creating uh, some things that are, that are not now, Kyle, I didn't, I didn't practice this before coming in, but this one's a column, right? Okay. Perfect. And all of these are a column, right? Oh, but it, it had to bork some of the, some of them together. So yep. let's say, uh, you are a row. So you two are going to be a row and you two are going to be a row. So that's going pretty well. So now how do I make, how do I make these? Well, I would say make uh, make two of those, like pick two of them and make them a column. Yeah. Okay. So these need to be a column. Yeah. A column is just, and for then two. make those a column and you're, and a column. then when you make the single one, a column, it will look for those two edges Ooh. that already exist. So and... I just say, I just say, make you a column. No, no, it's picked. It's made mm. its own column. Oh wait, I need to, you, Sorry. you might try making it bigger, um, so that it is kind of right by. There you go. I think that may have done it. I mean, you tell me because you have the project, but. Oh, wow. Okay. So it is, it is looking visually where, <laughs> where it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. I thought it was, I thought it was, okay. This is more advanced than I thought. So yes, P powerful wizardry from Zach <laughs> to make this type of deal. Well, you can see how you can make grids that are not, they're not necessarily, you know, you become part of a row. Oh, now I'm yeah, part of they a don't, row. They don't all have to uh, be perfect rows. You can sort of um, have ones that overlap into other uh, things and have varying things of different sizes as long as they align with something somewhere. Yeah. So this one's a row, and you, you're you're a row now too. And this this one here, you're going to need to uh, become. And it didn't create new controls, right? It just looked for existing controls that it can kind of. You can if you want to. Right, but <laughs> and there, there are will some... be more, yet more stuff to worry about. Yeah, but anyway, we've ended up with these controls, and now we can we can warp this around. If you've made anything in like web browsers and stuff, like if if you're making stuff for web that's responsive, these are a bunch of like divs, and the things are being held within those divs, and they're resizing. Um, but yeah, <laughs> oh, and Jeff, is this live? It is. Yeah. <laughs> Prove you it. Know... Mess up. How can we test? Uh, how can we ever? <laughs> how will we ever know? Uh, I hope that that was proof enough. I'll hold up a picture of today's newspaper. <laughs> so anyway, the thing that is lovely about this, right? If we come back to this example, is that we are able to keyframe those lines moving and bumping around into each other in a way that feels a lot better, like. The feeling is that like, oh, this is getting bigger and it's pushing the other things away. That's not really what's happening. It's the lines that are moving, creating the feeling that this is expanding and pushing the other things away. I think it's really smart to link the, make these kind of invisible controls that are actually doing the work of resizing everything. And it just feels like, ooh, everything's responding to the scale of this. 
No, no, no. They're responding to the movement of the divisions, not to the change in scale of the, of the object. The scale is the follower, not, not a leader, um, which is... I mean, if you think back to my example, I just had two sliders, and that, that makes sense when you only have you know, one split in each direction to worry about. But here, you'd end up with so many sliders that just trying to even keep track of which one's which wouldn't make sense. So having something um, tangible here that you can kind of adjust that way makes a lot more sense when you're dealing with all these little um, grids yeah. and combinations of grids and all yeah. kinds of complexity. And, and I'll say this, like if people are, are wondering like, man, flex, well, hold on, let me just call up uh, flex. I you have, uh, if, if you're looking for it, it's up on my screen. Okay, let's go to Kyle's screen. We go to Kyle's screen. Yeah. So, so what Evan's looking at right now is Flex by Zach Levitt, uh, who is a very smart gentleman who's made a lot of very helpful tools. I highly recommend uh, checking some of them out. Um, so uh, you can also see right here, we're at aescripts.com slash flex. Um, and if you want to check out some of Zach's other fine tools, I use Flow all the time. I use Explode Shape Layers all the time. Um, a lot of these are really handy things to have. Um, so. <laughs> and one of the things that's really interesting, like, I don't know, something about even if you have just a bunch of little simple shapes and, and that, like, a big grid of them responding feels very, say, like, very upscale, right? Like, it's very, <laughs> there's something very luxuriant about seeing this kind of responding grid that feels good, looks good. Um, if you're really into grid systems, I hope this really floats your boat uh, for those types of things. Um, also, just check out a lot of Zach's work. There's a lot of really inspirational stuff <laughs> that, that he's doing over there. Uh, with all those all those beautiful templates and turning, I don't know, turning things that I think look good statically into something that is functional. <laughs> That's And then being able to make... Um you know, say 700 versions of that thing yeah. um, with a bunch of minor variations. That's that's a whole other whole other uh, quadrant of After Effects work. But you've seen some of the groundwork of that right here, where yeah. you can kind of think about the structural way this can work, the way you can build one thing, the way you could make, uh, you know, photos be interchangeable, stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's, um, I always think about here in Ottawa, I'm going to go, I'm going to do a two shot as we're going to, we're going to talk directly to the people, Kyle. <laughs> Ooh. So here in Ottawa, we used to do motion design meetups. Um, this is, this is in the pre pandemic times. And I, I met with some people at these things who came out at a company who uses after effects as the kind of the structure to create menus and graphical elements and then everything is pushed out of after effects but allows them to do so much animated stuff with these types of systems uh and then move it on and i was just really impressed that that there's so many different things that are done with with after effects that aren't just exporting video right that aren't yeah. just making a beautiful thing and sending it out which it can do right compositing visual effects we still do that stuff uh, but people have shoehorned a lot of really interesting things into the system that is it's more and more becoming a kind of javascript sandbox for us yeah. to, to do stuff in maybe that's just because of the way you and i you know work on stuff um but and, and the yeah way. i mean i i use it like that too there's times where i use it like photoshop that i can feed a spreadsheet into right because it can be that you know yeah i remember at the at maybe the height of the um like the nft pfp stuff right that that on on a stream I generated like I think it was like nine hundred ninety nine thousand ghosts in all of ten minutes <laughs> using After Effects right because we can we talked about the kind of hooks that you can use right well you can use the composition name and that can become a random seed or you could use it to just advance through different permutations of things and you can end up with feeding variables and arrays and selecting from groups and changing what is visible just by changing what frame of a thing we're looking at and then or toggling a layer on and off like there's so many different interesting things you can be doing in after effects um so hopefully this has uh helped out with some of that uh i don't know anything to add kyle before we get into announcements <laughs> Um, I'll do a quick uh, just shout out because I saw, I think it was McCorn. Yep. Um, talking about another new tool that just came out called Kangaroo. By, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
uh, another developer uh, who goes by Good Boy Ninja. Um, uh, if you could take my screen for just a second here, I'll okay. just kind of show people. Uh, it's it's not exactly related to what we have been doing today, but certainly could be. And mm -hmm. if it had come out a little bit earlier, it could have been an interesting combination. Right. So you can use this to kind of, um, I believe Illustrator has a, a command where you kind of maybe, uh, you know, make a copy and move it thus far, and then you can tell it to just do that again. So Kangaroo can do that. It'll kind of take your last action and repeat it. And that's pretty cool already. But um, what uh, the thing that really blew my mind is that, uh, let me see if I can get to the example here. Um, it's effectively the blend tool from Illustrator, but right. here in After Effects. Um, where is a, uh, well, here, there, there's a good example. Um, there was uh, a couple of these. I mean, being able to like use it for gradients and stuff, that would be a lot of layers, but doable. Um, <laughs> There's well, no visible scroll bar on this site. <laughs> um, but uh, And then being able to sort of ease those copies. Um, there's like a little ease handle within the, the interface. So you can make all the copies and then sort of like weight them in one direction or something. So mm. I feel like this is going to enable some really cool stuff that has all been possible. Uh, you know, just like what we were showing before. That's possible manually, but at a certain point it just becomes so convoluted that um, it's probably worth, if it's something you do enough, it's worth paying, you know, uh, however many tens of dollars is, is um, in, the, in the particular case. Like, that's worth it yeah. to save yourself the time of trying to do it by, <laughs> by yourself. Yeah. And like, I don't know, it, it's, it's an interesting conundrum. I think it's. I think what's really impressive about about this thing is like there's no expressions in it. So the stuff you're making, it's not going to bog down your system as much as if it were creating like a little system, right? It's it's literally just scripting out and copying and duplicating and shifting in time and space <laughs> these things. Well, if if that's the case, and I haven't tried this yet, that also means that it's it's creating these, but then these aren't rigged in any way. So. Yeah. You, you set them up, but then it's kind of on you from that point. Yeah, so it, it has some it has controls for like, how are they different visually? How are they different temporally um, in there? Anyway, it's a, anyway, the Good Boy Ninja uh, family of tools is a, a wacky set of, <laughs> of interesting things. Yeah, there's some, but, some heady stuff in here that, uh, they, like he's got another tool called Skew that basically is a whole second timeline in After Effects that yeah. is very touchable. Um, an interesting brain on this on this fella. <laughs> well, yeah, like basically redesigning the way the program will work, right? So you're, yeah. you're interfacing with it in a totally different way. So definitely check those out, especially if you have, you know, frustrations in those sorts of areas. Um, and we'll, we'll see. Who knows what the future holds um, with you know, release 24 kind of around the corner. Um, announcements though, Kyle, what's going on next week? Well, uh, next week, uh, nothing is going on here because I will be on an airplane, uh, right. heading to Adobe max. Right. And I think, I think people can enjoy Adobe max virtually this year, right? Mm -hmm. That's yes, true. Exactly. Okay. Um, they're doing it as kind of a hybrid event, um, where, because they, uh, saw a lot of success in the last couple of years of having it, uh, be able to go out to everyone around the world. So obviously there is an in-person component and there will be, you know, however many thousands of people there. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that I'm going to be there. It'll be fun in person, uh, but you'll be able to watch a lot of things recorded later. You'll be able to watch the keynotes live and you'll be able to watch. Um, there are quite a few sessions that they're making specifically for the online audience. Mm. And, you know, Kyle, if people, if people are going to Max and they can find you on the floor, uh, you know, they should come up and they should come up and, and touch you with their physical hands. Uh, and <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe ask first and like tell me your name at least. Uh, right, I will probably... say that if you if you are going to be at Max or if you're in the uh, L.A. area already, um, check out. Uh, I just posted about it on Instagram. I am hosting a little meetup for Motion Folks on the Thursday night of Max. That would be October 12th. Right. Um, so you could, uh, you know, come say hi in person if you don't find me um, somewhere in the massive convention center. 
which is, you know, <laughs> very possible. possible. Yes, yeah, very, yeah. very probable. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I was, I was in San Francisco last week. That's enough travel for Evan for, for a long time. So, but we're not, we're not going to be doing a show next week, right? We're taking the week off and then we're back at it uh, the week after that. So you'll find us uh, on here, not next mon- Monday, but the Monday further than that, where we are going to be doing a radial array rodeo. We're going to round up some radial array techniques uh, that you're hopefully going to enjoy. Uh, so if you've enjoyed our our grids and our tiles and our retiles, uh, then we're going to continue that theme with radial, radial arrays uh, that I think are going to be a lot of fun because we have some fun methods for cranking those out and doing interesting things. Lots of reticules that we'll be able to create with mm, reticles. Nice. Reticules. I don't know. Um, I like the way you said it. Okay. It just occurred to me that uh, for our radial array rodeo, I will be in Tucson, Arizona, which feels very <laughs> contextually appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have a cowboy hat. That would be uh, pretty cool. Uh, maybe I'll get one between now and then. You don't currently own one? I thought was well, a... I, I do, but I'm not taking it with me to Tucson. Oh, okay. Well, I really thought that. Because it's big. Like, how would you take a, a cowboy hat in a suitcase? You put it on your head because uh, yeah. you're traveling. That, that's the only choice. And then you have a, a thing like this that you have to, like, fit in an airplane with. I would not want to sit next to a cowboy hat wearer. Well, yeah. And then, then when you're rude. on the plane, you, you put that cowboy hat, like, over your eyes as you snooze. Um, so, <laughs> you know, as you're, as you're traveling the dusty plane. <laughs> While you're relaxing only in profile. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. My experience with cowboy hats is mostly two dimensional, so I don't have a lot of yeah. experience with the the full the fullness <laughs> of these ten gallon structured hats that are going around. Or maybe it's yeah. because maybe in Canada we always we all kind of put the sides up even you know more than uh, mm-hmm. than in America. We yeah, not well, as many I mean, flat that's, hats. It's a different stylistic choice. I will I will say full disclosure: my cowboy hat is a costume prop. It is not oh, like yeah. a legit. <laughs> cowboy hat so it also might be a little bigger than what like a <laughs> practical cowboy hat oh might be. i see oh well that's good yeah. so <laughs> it's a, a, a kind of but I, I think i just figured out what my object for our radial array is going to be okay perfect good well while we get that figured out folks uh we'll we'll see you see you down the old dusty trail um but <laughs> get at us all the all the time at ec abrams on twitter on instagram on blue sky um over there oh, yeah. Uh, yep, uh, Kyle, Kylosaurus Rex, you find out on those same places, I think, right? Um, some of those places. Okay. You'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah, you, you'll figure it out. MotionDesignHotline.com, a real website where you can get real files from real people, and uh, hopefully you enjoy getting those. Anyway, bye for now. Stay creative, be kind to each other, and we will see you around the internet. Y'all take care. <laughs> Boy, uh, that's how you get kicked out of Arizona. <laughs>